Hi, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time to attend our webinar today. Uh, we are here from the UN Global Compact uh, in New York, and we're going to be presenting on how we guide companies along their sustainability journeys. Uh, so today's presenters, uh, myself, Amir Alpha, I sit here in New York, and I'm a senior manager um, for the engagement team uh, managing the Asia Pacific region. There's also Kylie Porter on the, on the webinar today, and she's the executive director of the Global Compact Network Australia. And we're also joined by Susan Mizrahi, who's head of corporate responsibility for Australia Post. And um, just a little housekeeping, if you have any questions uh, throughout the presentation, there is a Q&A button at the bottom and you can type in your questions there and we'll be happy to answer them during the Q&A session. And so here's our agenda for today. So I'm gonna give a brief overview of the UN Global Compact followed by uh, Global Compact Network Australia's updates and overview. We will then have a spotlight on Australia Post, and then we will have a short Q&A session. So without further ado, I'm going to start. Uh, so as you all know, business has evolved and is continuing to evolve. And the way we do business today has fundamentally changed. We no longer have sustainability to be uh, an option. It's an, a competitive necessity, and it's a key driver for growth, for operational efficiency, and for innovation. There's a financial performance um, evidenced by Arabesque and University of Oxford, who did a meta-analysis of over 200 academic studies. And in these studies, they found that 90% of them have shown um, that companies that have incorporated ESG performance or have good ESG performance have seen a 90%, um, sorry, have seen lower cost of capital. 88% um, of those studies have also seen uh, better operational performance. And 80% of those studies have seen better stock price performance. Overall, companies that do incorporate ESG into their business strategy have seen a 7% higher return on equity. To the right, you can also see two different indexes. The black is the Russell 1000, which is a total return index. And the red is the Just, is the just US uh, LCDI, which is a sustainability index. And so it's just basically indicating that the sustainability index is also outperforming um, a regular uh, full index fund. And so we do understand that sustainability is a challenge. Um, it's a maze and there's several different components that are challenging such as budget constraints, lack of tools, um, lack of industry standardization, the list is endless. We do understand, though, that businesses are engaged. Um, there's a huge gap between the percentage of companies that are aware of sustainability and the sustainable development goals um, and the lack of know-how or the lack of tools they know they need or knowing what tools they need to actually achieve those goals. And so the UN Global Compact is really here to guide companies uh, through this, their sustainability journeys and cut through the noise of the complexity. Just a little overview of the UN Global Compact. We are the world's largest corporate sustainability initiative uh, based on our 10 principles um, on human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. Um, we have close to 10,000 companies uh, that are committed to our 10 principles in over 160 countries around the world. We were founded in 2000 by former Secretary General Kofi Annan with his realization and uh, acknowledgement that we, the world uh, as they knew it then and as we know it now um, could not face these challenges without the impact of the private sector. And so the UN Global Compact was formed to be able to have um, a 
collective drive and momentum with pri the private sector to be able to face these challenges. And so with a framework um, for sustainable and responsible businesses based on our, the UN declarations and conventions, based on our 10 principles and the sustainable development goals, we're able to really drive um, our, this momentum to really create and shape the world we want. We have a proven approach to do this in three ways. Uh, the first is we help companies build trust and transparency to their shareholders and stakeholders um, through our platform to publicly communicate their commitment on progress in a principle-based approach, which is anchored in the UN. We also help companies achieve their sustainability objectives through access to guidance, training, tools, and support. And finally, we help uh, with the aid of companies, um, the public sector and governments to shape the corporate sustainability agenda and provide companies with access to global and local connections and partnerships. And so we're going to have a little poll And so the first poll of the day, um, overall, your company is doing a good job of telling its sustainability story. Do you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? And I'll just give about 15 to 20 seconds for uh, people to be able to um, vote. All right. Okay, so the majority of you agree and some strongly disagree and there's a couple of you that uh, disagree. Um, I think you guys can all see the results. All right, so we are going to move forward. So the way we help companies build trust and transparency um, is mainly providing them a platform to be able to communicate um, their commitment and report on progress in a very transparent way. Um, and the way we help companies communicate their commitment is in four ways. The first is through their participant profile, um, which I will show you in a second. The second is through um, their media toolkit, we also annually recognize pioneers in sustainability. Um, we recognize them here every September at the UN General Assembly. And finally, through flagship events and speaking opportunities, whether it's at events or webinars or videos or through our uh, online learning platform, which is our academy. And so this is an example of what a participant profile looks like. So you're able to link videos to your profile. You're able to also highlight which SDGs you're currently working on. Um, you're also able to link your uh, social media to your profile. And this is a great way to drive traffic to your websites and vice versa. We also provide participants a media toolkit, which helps you um, or guide you through press release, key messages, and social media guide, also guidance on content, and providing you um, an endorser and communication on progress logo. And so this is uh, just an example of last year's SDG pioneers. So we annually select 10 SDG pioneers around the world. Um, this year, the, the focus is on pioneers under the age of 35. Uh, we, are, we have the global round open right now. So if you have someone at your company who is under the age of 35 and who is doing some great things to advance sustainability in your company, um, you can go onto our website and nominate them uh, directly on our website. 
And some flagship events um, that you're able to participate in and speaking opportunities. Here's a couple of them that are coming up. Uh, in July, there's the High Level Political Forum, which is here in New York. There's also a couple of things in September. Um, the Secretary General is hosting um, a special summit, uh, and it's his climate summit. And if your company is doing things or creating solutions to, uh, to, to mitigate the climate issues at hand, um, these are the companies that are currently being invited and accepted at the climate summit. So if you think that your company has a, an, a scalable solution, um, please just let me know or let Kylie know, and we'd be happy to submit you um, as part of the list of companies to attend the Climate Summit. Um, September 24th to 25th, we have the SEG Business Forum uh, during the UN General Assembly Week. Uh, this is also a great opportunity for companies to really share their sustainability stories um, in the business forum as well. We also have a private sector forum. And finally, in November, there is the UN Forum on Business and Human Rights, which is taking place in Geneva. We also help companies report on their progress in an easy way to communicate your sustainability progress on an annual basis. And we do this through guidance on your COP, um, but also through assessment and best practices. And we have another poll. So overall, do you have the skills, training, tools, and resources you need to advance your company's sustainability goals? Do you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? And I'll give about 15 more seconds before I end the poll. All right, great. So it looks like quite a few of you uh, agree and strongly agree, and there's a few of you that, uh, that disagree and strongly disagree. So that's great. All right, so moving on. So we help companies achieve their sustainability objectives through guidance, training, tools, and support. Um, if, if you have not yet explored our vast library, we have thousands of publications available online. Um, we have tools, we have guidance, case studies, data sets. Uh, some of the really popular ones are here on the right. Um, there's the blueprint for business leadership on the SDGs. Uh, there's also um, a recent report that we released, which is um, integrating the SEGs into corporate reporting, a practical guide. It's actually a series of three different guides um, on corporate reporting for the SDGs. So these are really great tools for companies to use when, when it comes time for uh, doing your reporting. We also have launched our online learning platform in September. Um, and so this is our UN Global Compact Academy. Uh, this is available to the participant tier. We have virtual sessions, e-learning courses, an influencer series, and an online community. Currently, we have over 35 um, on-demand sessions that are available to our participants. Um, something to note is that the academy is available to all of your employees. So whether you have 10 employees or 100,000 employees, the academy is available to everyone if they so choose to, to, um, to explore some of our sessions. And here are some of our popular sessions that we have on demand. So um, ranging from um, SDG reporting to how to set a science-based target to addressing the gender pay gap. So we, we have a lot of um, practical sessions also depending on 
your um, level of understanding of sustainability. If, if you want to just have um, a quick um, e-learning course on, you know, what is sustainability, I would suggest the e-learning course, which is about 30 minutes long, and it's, it's a really great course to take um, to just brush up on what is sustainability. We also have some great tools available. These are just two examples of what we have. Um, there's the WEPS gender gap analysis tool, which is a great way for you to assess where you stand on gender parity or gender equality at your company. The data is anonymized, so we don't see um, what, what you actually input. Um, but we're able to, you're able to see where you stand in your region and in your sector. It also tells you um, or suggests to you what you can do to close those gaps, if there are gaps, but it also tells you where you're doing really well. Um, there's also the science-based targets um, tool, which helps companies to set ambitious science-based targets. And we have several levels of support. So whether it's um, direct access to our help desk, or if you're a participant, you have access to um, a participant engagement manager here in New York, um, as well as your continuous support from your local network in Australia. And we have another poll. So overall, does your company have the connections and partnerships it needs to shape the corporate sustainability agenda in your country. Do you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? And again, I'll give about 15 seconds uh, for people to have a chance to vote. Great. So again, it looks like there's there's quite a majority that agrees and and some strongly agree and um, there's a few that disagree. So definitely some work to do. All right. So let's keep going. So helping to shape the corporate sustainability agenda, and we really mainly do this through our action platforms. So action platforms are basically described as global working groups. And so they're multi-sectoral. So um, rain, you know, having a platform where you can bring together the private sector, the public sector, and even governments um, to be able to solve or take a deep dive on current issues. Um, for example, we recently launched the Sustainable Ocean Business Platform because in our last year's um, progress report, we have identified that the ocean or life underwater was the least um, popular <laughs> SDG being addressed. And, so be and because the ocean is so critical and so important to, um, you know, to life, uh, we created the action platform to address this critical uh, issue. So that's just one example. Um, another new one that we have launched uh, is Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions. Um, so these action platforms are time bound. They're about two to three years long. So they're not a, you know, a lifelong commitment. Um, but uh, you know, we know that companies have several priorities, so we restrict them to about two to three years, depending on, on which they are. And all the platforms uh, vary uh, a little bit. They're not all the same, um, but they produce, uh, you know, based on these action platforms, this is where we really produce a lot of our thought leadership. So whether it's tools, or whether it's guidance, um, for example, reporting on the SDGs action platform produced um, the three uh, essential guides to SDG reporting. And globally and locally annually every year, we have about 1700, over 1700 
uh, capacity building workshops involving about 19,000 companies around the world, um, which have led to almost 2,000, or sorry, 1,200 uh, public and private partnerships with companies. These have also led to 175 policy dialogues initiatives per year um, involving 3,000, over 3,000 companies and policy discussions with local, local government. So we are really trying to move uh, that needle for sustainability locally and globally. And companies in the UN Global Compact have, have been telling us that, um, you know, 80% of them are saying that we have helped them advance their sustainability at their company. 68% uh, have said that we have helped them drive implementation of sustainability policies and practices. So we're really, um, we're trying to improve these numbers, but these are really positive statistics showing that we are helping them improve sustainability at their companies. And uh, we have also seen that companies in the UN Global Compact do have higher ESG scores. And higher ESG scores uh, lead to higher margin premiums, higher market valuations, and positively impact creditworthiness in the long term. And we have also seen that UN Global Compact companies are outperforming their peers. So 31% uh, uh, higher on corporate governance. They're also 29% higher on emissions management and 22% higher on human and labor rights. There was also a study done by Ecovaris um, on supply chain performance. They analyzed over 30,000 companies um, and they revealed that companies in the UN Global Compact also have more advanced CSR management or and, um, more, uh, they outperform on supply chain sustainability. And investors are listening. Uh, large asset management firms such as BlackRock, JP Morgan, BNY Mellon, are using the UN Global Compact's 10 principles to uh, screen their ETFs around the world. So they're really starting to listen in terms of companies that are you know, incorporating ESG and following our 10 principles. And so we have two levels of participation at the UN Global Compact. There's the signatory level and the participant level. And then um, we have some lead companies and lead companies, it is currently by invitation. And these are companies at the UN Global Compact that are participating in two or more of the action platforms and are reporting at the advanced level um, for their annual communication on progress. And I'm not going to go over this slide, but this just basically shows the differentiation between being a participant and a signatory. Um, and we will be sharing these slides with you after the session uh, with our follow-up email. So you'll be able to see them and go through them as you, as you see fit. And here is also the annual contributions based on whether you're a signatory or a participant and based on your annual uh, gross sales or annual revenue. And with that, uh, we're going to move over to Aust um, Australia's Global Compact Network, presented by Kylie. Hi, everyone. How are you? So thank you for taking some time on a Friday to dial in, and thanks, Samira, for that really great overview. So for those who haven't met me, I'm Kylie Porter, and I'm the Executive Director of the Global Compact Network Australia, or GCNA. So can we go to the next slide, please? So the Global Compact Network Australia is the Australian business-led network of the UN Global Compact. So we've got the Australian companies who are members of the UN Global Compact as our members, also some subsidiaries of global companies who are operating in Australia. And we're also multi-sector, multi-stakeholder, sorry. So we've got business associations, not-for-profits or civil society, and the universities. 
And we all work together to advance responsible business practices and the private sector's contribution to sustainable development. So some of our members include some of Australia's leading listed companies. Um, for instance, there's about 16 or 17 of the top 20 ASX companies. And then we've also got some mid-tier companies, privately owned companies, and a growing base of SME. We, through our activities, we provide a range of um, events, but also a platform for that dialogue, learning and influence um, to really help capacity build around a variety of responsible business practices. So really we see ourselves as a, as a differentiator here in Australia because we are very inclusive, um, practical and leading edge. We're also viewed as a, a commentator and trusted advisor on responsible and sustainable business practices. Go to the next slide, Katie. So I'm not going to go over this slide because I think Amira covered it off very well in terms of why you would join. I will say, however, that a lot of our members, so Amira was explaining the um, how you can join as a business and your joining fee does include access to GCNA and all of our events here. And we find that our members get the most benefit from a lot of the events that we run um, on the ground. And these, oh, I'll go through these in a minute, but they are anywhere from your rudimentary, we've just started on our sustainability, on building our sustainability strategy, or we've got a new employee who might not have a thorough understanding of, say, for example, business and human rights, all the way through to um, really advanced dialogue with a lot of our members. So next slide, Katie. So this is just a very indicative sum of our members. Um, we're in the process of updating our website at the moment. I'm happy to send around the link about where all of our members are um, on that website. But this gives you a good indication of the breadth of members who we've got and who we engage with on a regular basis. Next slide. So our activities. So we divide our activities into four streams. We've got a business and human rights stream, an environment and climate change stream, a governance and anti-corruption stream, and a stream around action on the SDGs. So to give you an insight into that, on the business and human rights side, every year we run at least one 101 face-to-face -face learning seminar on business and human rights, which is really explaining the UN guiding principles and the responsibility of businesses to respect human rights. Within that, um, that stream, we also do a variety of webinars. So a good example is at, on the 1st of August, we're running a webinar on the various human rights standards globally. So the, the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, the OECD guidelines for multinational companies, how that links in with the UN guiding principles on, uh, sorry, the UN global compacts principles, and also how it links in with the sustainable development goals and really how that like, spaghetti soup of um, spaghetti soup of standards works together. Annually, we also run a, um, a dialogue, an Australian dialogue on business and human rights, which we do with the Australian Human Rights Commission. That's a multi-stakeholder dialogue. So there's, it's represented about 50% by business and then the other 50% is across between government civil society and academia. So this year we're holding that on the 7th of October in Melbourne. Um, and in addition to that, we, we run a variety of other webinars, for example, a trends webinar. Um, we're, we're looking at running one on the LGBTI standards later on this year as well. Then we have an environment and climate change stream. Historically, we very fair to say we haven't been very strong in the environment space. We've only done a couple of events a year. We've really, we're really ramping that up this year. So one of those activities is we work with alongside WWF to deliver the science-based target initiative here in Australia. And we've run two webinars for that already this year. And then we're running a road show in um, Melbourne, Sydney and Perth in um, August. We've got, we've just started a new stream of activities around the just transition, so those social dimensions of climate change. And we've got our first breakfast briefing for that on the 17th of July. And then we'll be having another event in the same vein as that in October in Sydney. Um, we also 
are starting to map out a stream of activities around the circular economy. And so that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, then we have a governance and anti-corruption stream. So this stream is really targeted at your anti-bribery and corruption specialists in the business or compliance managers, general counsel and governance people. Um, we have focused quite heavily on the anti-corruption side of this stream for quite some time. So we run an annual trends webinar on anti-bribery and corruption, some of the things that are happening in an Australian context. Similar to business and human rights, we also have an annual dialogue. So this year the dialogue will be held in on the 5th of September. And then we run a range of forums. So recently we did one on some of the governance challenges in anti-bribery and corruption compliance. And then we're also one, running one on investigations and reporting later on this year. Um, Amira mentioned, Amira did mention about the action platform on SDG 16 around peace, justice and strong institutions. So as a local network, we are involved in that, that action platform and I'll be engaging in one of their face-to-face -face meetings in July in New York and I'm hoping to come back with some um, deliverables that I can share with our members um, and hopefully get a few of our businesses joining onto that action platform again. And with regards to the SDGs, we try to link all of our activities to the SDGs. And so in, even if it's just inherently explaining which X SDG that that particular activity would relate to. We also run the sdgs.org.au website, which is a website that we we run on behalf of the, it's our website, but we run it on behalf of the Australian government. And it's at the moment, it's really a deposit, depository of um, case studies on how organisations across Australia are contributing to the SDGs. The website's going to be updated in the next couple of weeks and it includes a whole section on the latest resources around the SDGs and implementing them into your strategies and operations. And we've got a future plan for that that website to become a real hub for Australia on the SDGs. So including things like events that might be happening on the SDGs and opportunities for collaboration. We also are doing some work around measurement and reporting on the SDGs. So there'll be a event that we're running with RMIT at the end of August, which some information will come about around that shortly. In addition to that, we participate in numerous speaking platforms. So for example, this week, I spoke at the Department of Home Affairs um, first conference on knowing your supply chain, so real focus on the Modern Slavery Act. And we participate in a range of different other speaking platforms. We also do policy engagement. Um, so that's anywhere from engaging on across those platforms. So we've contributed quite strongly into the different elements of the Modern Slavery Act and the reporting requirement associated with that on the um, the request for abuse on having an independent commissioner for, um, around bribery and corruption and so forth. And we also provide member support. So one of the things that we do quite regularly is engage with our members through their materiality reviews but also we quite often have members coming to us um, asking questions. Um, I will say, I will caveat that with, we aren't consultants, so we don't, we can't always provide individual member support, but we definitely advocate for peer learning and we're always available to answer people's questions. Next slide, Heidi. Katie, sorry. So I've probably covered this, but this sort of gives you an idea of some of our, um, Member benefits, so we've got member only events, that learning program, the opportunities for peer learning and insight, our flagship events, which includes those two dialogues that I mentioned on business and human rights and anti bribery and corruption. We ran our inaugural conference this year on rebuilding trust in corporate Australia. We'll probably do that conference every two years, and then in the off year, we'll do what um, colloquially across the UN Global Compact is known as Making Global Goals Local Business, which will be focused on the SDGs. Um, we do some specialty events. So for example, we hosted a small dinner for um, like an in-conversation dinner with Justice Richard Kirby. And then the policy engagement, and I, I should have mentioned on the other slide, we also do communities of practice. So in terms of um, the community of practice that we have going at the moment is on modern slavery and that includes 
that's about 30 of our businesses, um, business members, and it's a safe space for peer learning and education around um, Australia's Modern Slavery Act and then the, the subsequent reporting requirement. Next slide. So I've mentioned some of these, but this is an example of some of the events that we have coming up here. Um, I will mention that Amira mentioned the um, the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development in July and the local network um, events that are there. So I'll be over in um, the US for that. We're also looking at ways to participate in the Climate Forum in September. And then I will be heading over to the UN Human Rights Forum in November as well with um, one of our directors, Vanessa Zimmerman. So that's all I wanted to do because I wanted to be able to give people more time for questions. I'm conscious that we've got Susan coming up too. So I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Samira, back to you. Great, so now we have Susan to present her uh, spotlight on Australia Post. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation to join you all today. Um, I'll just start with some general remarks and then um, we'll show you a little clip um, and then I'll, uh, I've got a few slides to share with you after that. So thank you. Um, Australia Post first became a signatory to the Global Compact uh, nearly 10 years ago. And the principles have been at the core of our approach to corporate responsibility since then. Um, they're even referenced in our corporate responsibility policy. Uh, but we view the principles as the baseline, the minimum of what's expected of an individual business. Um, they're clear, prescriptive and directional statements. And that's unlike the um, UN, um, the Sustainable Development Goals, which are an agenda of work or a global rallying cry um, with time bound targets. Um, by adopting the 10 principles, we've also come to learn more about the SDGs and now the SDGs are the backbone of our approach to corporate responsibility. Um, if you wouldn't mind just showing the little clip. Thank you. Um, so in, in my view, um, business action in relation to the SDGs must be underpinned by the Global Compact principles to avoid any um, greenwashing or bluewashing, as they call it at the UN space. Um, the, the Global Compact's 10 principles are therefore the foundation for any company um, seeking to advance the SDGs. Um, and this slide here shows the uh, approach that we've taken uh, to the SDGs. So first of all, actually, in 2016, we mapped our business against the 17 goals, um, and we and we identified some that were um, that stood out. Um, but you know, 12 months, 18 months later, we realised that there were actually more. So we modified the the, the approach that we took, and and this slide here depicts uh, the approach that we have since adopted. Um, what we did was draw out our, our value chain, which actually as a business hadn't been an exercise that had been done. And we juxtaposed that with the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. What we found is that we impact some goals more directly than others, and that might be positively or negatively. Um, and so you can see there in the grey dots, uh, those that we impact more directly. Um, 
We recognise that Australia Post operations have a, a global impact and by addressing these goals that uh, we impact directly, um, we feel that that is key to seeing our customers, communities and, and our business prosper and become more inclusive. Can you move to the next slide, please? Um, so um, this is a sneak preview of our new corporate responsibility strategy. It's our new three year plan and we're going to launch it in the coming couple of weeks, but I thought I'd give you a heads up now. Um, the, um, uh, oh, if you wouldn't mind just clicking back. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so, um, so it's our new three year plan and, and we've outlined our aspirations for 2030 related to those goals that we impact most directly. So the plan is kind of like a two in one strategy. It's got our 2030 aspirations and then a, a, a detailed set of commitments of what we're seeking to achieve over the next three years to bring us closer to, to achieving those, um, those goals. Um, and it, the, the plan re responds to our evolving business priorities, including international expansion, reinventing the post office, um, est establishing new government and financial services, um, and putting customers and community at our heart. Um, so the next slide, please. Through the strategy, we've taken a traditional triple bottom line approach or a people profit planet approach, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, if not all of you. Um, and you can see here our three approaches. So up on the up, upper left side, it's the, the um, operating responsibly component of everyone prospers. Um, up, upper right, it's um, everyone's included with a focus on, on the people component and down the bottom, everyone thrives, which is the planet component. Um, so the, the seven focus areas in the middle there are our, um, we have the, the commitments that I mentioned are, are addressing those seven focus areas. But what we've done is deliberately tie this back to those sustainable development goals that we impact most directly. Um, if you move to the next slide, thank you. So in the lead up to this uh, plan being approved, my team and I engaged with over 80 or 90 internal stakeholders. Um, and it was a really cumbersome <laughs> and um, intensive uh, um, engagement and um, we have we work across the business in partnership with a whole lot of different areas whether it be environmental safety diversity etc and we have specialist teams in those areas so we worked in collaboration with those areas to set more ambitious targets as i was saying that line back to those 17 goals and 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 specify our big commitments moving over the next three years um, i think it's really helpful Helped that our CEO is a really strong advocate of the sustainable development goals. Um, our CEO on the on the on the um, right of that screen um, is um, you know is really committed to sustainability, and um, she believes that leaders should be judged more on just the financial returns that they create for shareholders, but also that the legacy that they create for the world. Um, she's even incorporated the sustainable de development goals in the scorecards of some of our executive teams. So she's really leading from the front. And if you could move to the final slide there. Um, so this is just an image of the conference that Kylie mentioned a moment ago, the Rebuilding Trust in Corporate Australia conference that the Global Compact Network Australia recently convened. Um, and um, it's just a screenshot. I didn't have the, the shot of the of the people, only of the stage. But um, but if you if you were to if you were to see it from where I was sitting in that screen, um, there were hundreds of people in the room, and um, a lot of people were veteran sustainability people, but a lot of people were new to, to the sustainability landscape. Um, having the, such an active global compact network locally is just so important for Australian businesses. Um, for events like this to come together and learn from one another um, and to test ideas and challenge one another's thinking. Uh, but also, um, as was mentioned earlier, there's um, webinars and other forums that we can engage with. Um, one of the things that I've loved the most that the Global Compact Network Australia has offered in, in the past year or so is the establishment of a non-slavery community of practice. Um, we get together every couple of months to discuss how companies are addressing the modern slavery legislation that was announced late last year and what best practice looks like in this space. Um, and this has very much helped inform Australia Post's approach to modern slavery. Uh, we're not bound to issue a public statement on, on the, uh, in relation to legislation till the end of next year, um, but we have taken the decision to 
um, establish a working group and uh, stream, various streams of work and to, and to develop our, our, our initial statement this year just for in, internal purposes and educative purposes. Um, and having the, the technical support through these forums and various events um, of this uh, modern slavery working group or community of practice has been um, just so very helpful in that process. Um, my team and I have participated or, or joined in on some of the webinars that have been held, some of them um, hosted locally um, in relation to site, setting science-based targets recently, um, and, but some, one that was hosted globally in how to report on the SDGs. So they're, they're just some of the ways in which that we've um, at Australia Post found the local network uh, to be in, uh, you know, a partner on our sustainability journey and enormously helpful to be a member of. They're, they're the main things I just wanted to convey. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Susan. Um, and without further ado, if you have any questions, um, please submit them on the Q&A uh, tab at the bottom or top of your screen. And I'll give you guys about a minute or two. All right, here's the first question. What is the communication on progress reporting requirement? All right, so submitting an annual COP is at the heart of your company's commitment to the UN Global Compact and it provides valuable information to your stakeholders. The overall format of a COP is quite flexible and uh, COPs can be prepared in any language so long as they meet the minimum requirements. We also collaborate with other frameworks, for example, um, GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, uh, to ensure that the standards are aligned and that meeting the requirement of one framework can help comply with others. Here's another question. Um, how do the principles and the 17 SDGs connect? Right, so the sustainable development goals are the key performance indicators for the world, uh, for all sectors of society, including business. So if we leave the SDG by 2030, then we will have created a more just, peaceful, and healthy world while leaving the behind. The 10 principles are the norms and values that will guide our actions while we are working to achieve the SDGs. As an analogy, think about when you were a student. Your goal was to get good grades, but we all know we shouldn't cheat or bully others to get the grades we want. Can I just add something to that? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, the way that I see it is that the, the principles are there to help us as businesses do no harm. So it's, it's that, that, that um, baseline, the minimum of what's expected of us. Um, whereas the, the sustainable development goals um, are the, the program of work that we all need to, to rally around um, to ensure that we have a planet that, that is um, equitable and, and healthy and can continue to thrive. Um, and so, like, like I sort of touched on beforehand, I, I, I sometimes um, speak to colleagues that are, are newer to the sustainability agenda and they, they're talking about what they're doing on the SDGs, but they're not members of the Global Compact Network. And I find that a little bit unusual because the, the thing that should happen first is that we should all be seeking as companies to, to do no harm and to, to operate ethically and, and um, prescribe with, you know, to those um, those 10 principles and then think creatively about how more we can do to, to innovate and, and create um, positive change environmentally and socially through the, through the SDG lens. Great, thank you so much, Susan. Um, Kylie, do you have anything to add or, or should I move on to the next question? No, feel free to move on. Susan jumped in and took my whole life, <laughs> which is great. Okay, awesome, great. Uh, there's another question. Um, how is the UN Global Compact situated within the UN system? 
So the UN Global Compact is supported by a resolution of the UN General Assembly. It is operationally, um, the UN Global Compact is an initiative of the Executive Office of the UN Secretary General. And um, the UN Secretary General has chairs on the UN Global Compact Board. Uh, with regards to funding, the UN Global Compact is a living example of a public-private partnership. So we receive public se sector funding, which is held in a UN trust from UN member states, and we receive private sector funding in the form of uh, your annual financial contributions, which are managed by the US-based foundation for the Global Compact. And um, from the business signatories and participants of the UN Global Compact. So we have um, another question. Um, how does the UN Global Compact or Global Compact um, Network Australia engage or support SMEs or the smaller companies new to sustainability with fewer resources and knowledge? Uh, Kylie, would you like to answer that question? Sure. So in terms of the GCNA, our SME members, and I'm more than happy to send around this information later, but our SME members are given similar access to the corporate members to all of our events. So for example, all of the webinars are free to all of our GCNA members. And then we've got a variety of forums um, that they can attend to. So I, I totally realise that sometimes for SMEs it's very difficult to get to those those forums, but we do try to have forums that are particularly on that, the, I don't want to use the word journey, but for companies who are on the, that's the start of their journey in this space so that they can actually share learnings from not just the big end of town, um, but also some of the mid-tiers and the other SMEs. So. We, we regularly have SMEs in the room across all the streams of events, so that's one way that we do it. Um, the other way that we do it is we're starting to map out a bunch of publications that we're going to do, um, and those publications aren't all written for the um, big end of town either. They're actually practical. A lot of the publications we'll be doing this year are around practical guides and information that then SMEs or um, our other business members can go away and read. And they're designed to be quite succinct um, to, ensure, to ensure that we don't take up too much of people's time, but they can at the same time build capacity. And the last thing that we do is, um, you know, a good example is we, our annual, we do an annual report. And so we actually engage our SMEs who offer services like compiling annual reports that also helps with um, supporting our member base. It might not help with increasing their capacity of um, sustainability principles as directly, but it definitely helps with them, um, their business and also engaging with them on a more regular basis. Um, I guess the other way is what, what Susan was saying around this cross-sector collaboration, we try to make sure that we have people from all different sectors and all and also different types of businesses, be it SME or not, in the room across our events so, so that we do get that learning because actually we find that there's a lot to be learned from SMEs um, as well. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, actually 60% of uh, the companies in the UN Global Compact are um, SMEs. So the majority of the companies that are in UN Global Compact are the small to medium enterprise. All right, so are there any final questions that we may answer before we wrap things up? I think that um, if you do have any further questions, um, we will be sending follow-up emails. So please feel free to contact either myself or Kylie. We would be very happy to answer any of your questions. Um, again, we want to thank you all for taking the time uh, on this Friday morning uh, to join us here today. And thank you very 
much, Susan, for your valuable contribution. And thank you, Kylie, as well, uh, for taking the time. So we wish you a great weekend, and we will be following up in the next few days. Um, thank you, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have through email or phone as well. Thank you so much.